Tal Gibor, it's such a pleasure to have you here. You're the main leading vegan activist in Israel. You founded the Animal Liberation Movement in Israel. You won the big Brussels show in 2014 and now you're heading for the politics, which is the main topic we want to talk about today. I'm going to be the personal advisor of the, to the Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Unbelievable. It's like the personal advisor of Angela Merkel in Germany or of Trump in, in the States. Welcome, Tal Yeboah. Thank you. Great to be here in Frankfurt. <laughs> yeah. I love Germany. <laughs> Thank you. Tal, when did all this vegan activism yeah, life from you start? I'm an activist since I was born. This is the truth. When I was seven years old, I you know, just started to volunteer in a dog shelter in Ranana, where I used to live. Uh, but you know, it just got so bigger and bigger when I used to volunteer with dogs and cats. I used to eat animals. Uh, but when I was 32, I just saw how they separated um, a mother, a baby, a mother, you know, a cow from her baby or a calf and it just changed my life and the one who was raising them he told me you know i was just it's like when it's a big conflict between your mind and your heart and when i saw it and you know the cow she was just crying and she started to you know in defense she, she wanted to get to her baby and i was like this i was in shock and i was starting to cry and i'm not a crying uh, person really and uh, i said to the man who was raising them i said but she's only a cow and that man told me a sentence that ch just changed my life and he told me that she's a mother she's a mother and this is the main thing and it was just like a hammer on my head 500 kilos on my head and i'm a mother of three young beautiful girls and I said if someone would hurt my girls I would kill him it's the truth and I'm not going to apologize about it so this is what I'm doing I'm separating between mothers and their babies I'm not this kind of person I don't want nothing with this situation I don't want to pay for it and this is it and my life just changed because I was absolutely sure when I'm come to when I, I'll come to people and I say look what happened to the animals look what we are doing to the animals they all will say oh my god and they become vegans and I just discovered that it's not the truth and then I started to think what I have to do to make my effective way to be the effective way and the huge and the massive change and you know life just brought me to here <laughs> <laughs> wow cool and you said that was eight years ago, so in the year 2000, 2001? It was uh, nine years ago, yeah. Nine years ago. Ten and years ago because I was, uh, I was vegetarian for ten months. Okay. And after that I discovered that, uh, yeah. you know, the grind, all the male chicks in the egg uh, yeah. industry. And after ten months I became vegan. So before you also were like loved animals, but you didn't have the knowledge about what is happening behind all the products. I, I have to say that today if we don't have the knowledge, it's because we're not uh, chasing for the knowledge. We're not, we don't want to know. And a lot of, and me also, when I, my, my girls, they were little, I used to take them to dairy farms to, you know, to pet calves. And I didn't make the connection. I didn't make the connection. I didn't ask myself why the calves are here on, in cages and the mothers are over there. But after I became vegan, when I used, when I took my girls to the dairy farms because they uh, became vegan one year after me, mm -hmm. uh, I took them to dairy farms. But now, this is what I'm saying all the time, the reality didn't change, we changed. So I could take them to the dairy farms and say, now you see the truth, this is the truth. And this is because, because we're sucking the others of their mothers. Yeah. So I just, you know, my all the things that I used to say to them just change. But the reality is the same reality, horrible reality. Yeah. And what is then or what did then motivate you to be like a full time activist and to really go into it all the time and with your complete full energy that you have? The only thing that is going to save the world is and going to save, you know, Earth I'm doing it for my daughters and for the animals. It's the same thing exactly for me because uh, they can't defend themselves. 
So this became my main thing. And you know, a lot of people changed because they saw me on Facebook or saw me on television or so it doesn't matter. And all these messages, this, those thousands of thousands of messages of people that change, it's like, you know, it's like a fire. It's, it gives you so much energy and you, you feel that your work, you know, it's, it's paid because <laughs> the world is changing. Cool. Not far, not fast enough, but it is changing. Yeah. And going back to the Big Brother that I mentioned at the early beginnings, yeah. um, what motivated you to go to Big Brother? <laughs> well, like I said, I don't have television in my house and the Big Brother show was for me something like it was trash. The, the biggest trash that you can see. Yeah. Because I didn't understand why people wanted to see other people fighting <laughs> <laughs> on television. But there is a very smart uh, Israeli guy from uh, Israel. His name is Ronen Bar. He's an undercover investigator, is investigator and he's got a, his own association, Sentient. He used to work with another uh, organization in Israel. And he told me, because when the Big Brother, you know, all the, all the people, they go in Israel and they just start to think who can, who can they take to the Big Brother show. And they came to a lot of uh, vegans demonstration and they started to, to ask because the veganism became really a uh, really thing in Israel. A lot of people were talking about it because of Gary Urovsky. Um, and he told me, you know, Tal, whatever you would do, uh, direct actions, demonstrations, everything, you can't get to the people, to so many people in Israel, and you have to go to the Big Brother. If they want you, you have to go, because they will take you because of your character. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the most viewed show in Israel. So I had to do it. So re you reached millions and millions of people, and uh, now how many people in Israel are vegan? Or Uh, percentage of the this is something like 400,000 vegans, vegans, only vegans, yes, but uh, there are a lot of people that uh, doesn't uh, consume meat. Wow, so it's around 6% of the population. Yeah, 6% yeah. of the population and with the uh, vegetarians, something like 11%. Yeah, Israel is great. In this, <laughs> in this. <laughs> Israel is great. <laughs> Yeah. And But Israel is great because what I did there, I, I don't think that I could do, that I could do in uh, other countries. There was one girl, beautiful woman, that just uh, she decided to do it in um, in the UK. She went yeah. to the Big Brother show now, okay. but she. It didn't succeed. It didn't succeed. Yeah, but you also have to. You need the personality and the outgoing, uh, yeah, temptations and. And, and so I was to, me, yeah. you know, with me. Uh, yeah. Another two vegans came to the Big Brother show, okay. but one was for the health, and the other one was very spiritual, and they do, and they couldn't do the massive change because Israel is a very hard country, hot country, and I'm one of the population. You understand? I'm not talking to people from above. I'm an Israeli. I'm a mother. I'm a mo uh, you know mother of three. I was in the army for five years, and people in Israel could relate to what I'm saying. And a lot of people hate me in Israel. You know, it's 180% uh, degrees yeah. of uh, yeah. how people <laughs> feel about me, but they all feel something about me. And w this is the main thing. You can yeah. hate me, you can love me, you can adore me, you can you want to kill me, it doesn't matter, but you can't be uh, that you want to have not opinion about me at all. Yeah. It's not, uh, it's not <laughs> going to happen. Yeah. But at the end, it kind of counts what you can, what you are doing for the animals and for the earth and environment and the kids, actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 And when, or now your next step is going to the politics. Last week, the uh, votes for the Knesset have been. And what is your new function in there? Can, uh, can you tell us, please? I'm going to be the personal advisor of the, to the Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. And C can you t tell that again, what, what that <laughs> personal advisor of Benjamin Netanyahu? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's unbelievable. <laughs> it's like the personal advisor of Angela Merkel in, in Germany or of uh, Trump in, in the States. A lot of people there are saying to me, why you're going with the prime minister? Is, uh, you know, his party is a right wing party. And, yeah. you know, I look at vegans like this and I'm saying you're absolutely 
I don't know where is your brain. It's the prime minister of Israel. And if we could do it in every country in the world, it's a massive change. And I can just say thank you, thank to the prime minister that he offered yeah. me this job. Yeah. So what is your, what will be your function uh, as a advisor? We don't know yet because it never happened before. He just uh, called me, I think it was uh, one month ago, and he told me uh, it wasn't like this. At first he wanted to, to give me a, a place in the parliament, but Israel, like I said, it's a very hot uh, country and he had to do so many things, you know, that just that he's going to be the prime minister of the biggest party in Israel. So he made some changes but then it was me just like that okay what what we are going to happen because the animal situation in israel is absolutely like hell this is what i'm doing the big brother the politics but what i'm doing is document um farms in israel for the last eight years i've been in thousands of farms nobody in israel can tell me the truth you understand because i read all the agriculture's uh, thing and uh, and and then uh, he just called me and he said okay we couldn't succeed with succeed with this so now i want to give you this job and i said of course of course, this is what I want to do, but we never had this uh, job before. And now we need to know what I'm going to do. I don't even know the salary. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't care. I just said, yes. The first thing, yes. When I'll be there, yes. I know that things will change. But I have to tell you, it's not just, you know, uh, to change uh, laws in Israel, which of course is very important. It's my personality in the prime minister chamber you understand what i'm talking about i can do massive changes it's like how the prime minister gave me this job it's because all his family you know they're starting to uh, know what happened to the animals and uh, they start to think all over and this is what we have to do we have to 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 get to the you know the powerful person in all around the world and to change them after that everything will be much easier we have to be smart. Yeah, yeah. You have to look where there are the points and which point will make the most impact. And yeah. 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 And so, what will you, your advisor, and uh, will you? Uh, you did said you might change the uh, laws. We have to change a lot of laws. Of yeah. course, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. We have to change. We have, uh, um, you know, the livestock shipments. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what's uh, happening here in Germany, but in Israel, they just brought in the last year 700,000 animals to Israel. The journey is hell, absolute hell. So we have to, to pass the law that will stop it. And we have to pass the law that they won't kill dogs in shelters in Israel. They kill almost uh, 100,000 healthy dogs in Israel every year, every year. Um, so many laws today if a dog will bite you in israel you have to take him to the government to be you know in a facility for 10 days we don't want to do it we want that every uh, dog that's got vaccine should be in his own home you understand mm -hmm. a lot of things but it's the laws it's the what's happened to the animals you know i don't know we've been in farms in israel yeah. absolutely it's like hell. It's absolutely like hell. Nobody cares. Nobody is doing nothing. I'm, uh, you know, I, uh, every, every time that we document, mm -hmm. I'm coming home and what I'm doing, you know, I'm file a complaint to the agriculture minister, the agriculture mm -hmm. office. Nobody cares. But now when I come to this, when I'm part of the prime minister mm -hmm. chamber, it's something else. They didn't want to answer me. They didn't want to give me to get inside of the farms. They, but now I can do it by law. You understand? Mm -hmm. Every, I was uh, arrested 14 times for these things. Yeah. And this is it. Now I'm not going to be arrested. Today when I go to farms, I have to be, you know, with sunglasses and with hat. And nobody would, say, would see my tattoo that n nobody will recognize me. And yeah. this is it. It's all over now. You didn't want me... <laughs> from the window, so now I'm coming from the front door. <laughs> very good, very good. That's so, yeah, such a historical moment. Uh, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. And yeah, to that this 
yeah idea to go into the government and so it's all i think it's in the mind of a lot of people but really to go that step how did you make this come happen how did you got into contact with benjamin Netanyahu? that he called you oh let's let's do that <laughs> i was very excited when he called me um One and a half year ago, we did an undercover investigation in the Haifa slaughterhouse in Israel. It's the third uh, slaughterhouse, the, the, thir the biggest third uh, slaughterhouse in Israel. Um, when the undercover investigation just came out, we knew that people won't watch it because it was very hard materials, very hard. And you know, now on Facebook and on Instagram, everything is just censorized. We can't put, upload nothing if we want it to stay. And uh, we started to think what we can do. You know, it was in the television, it was uh, eight uh, minutes uh, article, which was very important. I wanted the article will be only about the kosher thing, Not about the moral thing, only about the kosher. The kosher thing, because in Israel, 70% of the population, they, they want to see the kosher stamp, mm -hmm. okay? Because this is Israel. And I, I told the, the, the one from the media that just did the article about it, I said, I want rabbis. I want rabbis to talk about this. This is, isn't kosher. And this is what we did. We just took two uh, very big rabbis in Israel, and they said, this is, it's not kosher. And one of them is a leading rabbi that his wife became vegan because she was in our lecture in one of the universities in Israel. So I knew that it will be fine because, mm -hmm. you know, when you're asking for someone to say which and is not vegan, you're, you don't know what he's going to say. But it was great. And uh, then what we did, we just started to make videos about celebs in Israel that they are watching the atrocities. Mm -hmm. And it made huge impact because everybody knows wants to see celebs and when they are crying and shouting uh, so i started to text so so many celebs in israel and because i'm a mini celeb i could do it they they um but i have to tell you a lot of people singers and artists they didn't even answer but i sent a message to the son of the prime minister which is vegetarian and he texted me back And I was, wow, just like this. Uh, and he told me, I know who you are. Thank you for what you're doing. Um, I'm a, a vegetarian b myself, but I don't take part in any public campaigns. Um, I don't uh, get interview, nothing like that. But thank you. And I was, wow, he answered me. And after two days, uh, I just sent him another message. And I told him, I have to tell you something, everyone that Uh, the telling me that they are vegetarian, I said, okay, great, but it's not enough. And because you're the son of the prime minister, I didn't know what to, to tell you. But it's like, it's burned me from inside. So you have to be, to be vegan, and this is why. And he said, he was laughing and said, thank you. And, uh, and that's it. Two months after that, he was uh, on a tour in Israel, and he just Uh, he got inside to a dairy farm with, with goats and he just took a picture of two little goats and said, please don't eat meat. And I was, wow, like this. And you have to, you have to realize in Israel, Yair Netanyahu, the son of the prime minister, is the most Googled person in Israel. Okay? Wow. A lot of people hate him and yeah. a lot of people love, love him. Mm -hmm. So. I can relate, <laughs> but no, it's, uh, it's very huge in Israel. Yeah. And after two months, it just, uh, he was there and it was like, you know, it, it did something to him. And then he texted me and said, I want to help you. And then I knew that I'm going to be like, you know, on high level because everybody wants to know and to hear Yair Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. And then we, we became friends. I don't know how, but we became friends. And everything was, you know, like this. And uh, his father, when uh, the, the president of China, he was in Israel two months ago, something like that. And the Israeli uh, prime minister, he said, you know, to him, here in the Volcan Center, we have a very big uh, agriculture center in Israel. We know that we can feed all the world with plants because the the inefficient way to grow protein is by using 
cows. And I was like this. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> the Chinese Prime Minister was it? Who the said Israel. The Israeli yeah. told, told the Chinese one. Netanyahu told the... Yeah. Wow. And so the son had an influence on his father already and... Uh, We saw it now when it was Thanksgiving in the uh, United States. Mm -hmm. You know, with the president, he takes two turkeys and he said, oh, you're going to live, we're going to kill 40 million, but you're going to live. And his grandsons uh, were there. You know, one uh, was called Carrot and the one called Peas. And he said, we want uh, a vegetarian Thanksgiving. And this is what they had. And I just sent it to the son of the Prime Minister of Israel and I told him, you see, Yair, this is how we're going to get all of you from Trump and Netanyahu and everyone. We have wow. to use, you know, everything that we can do. And what I, I have to say that Yair is so passionate about it and is helpful and it's great. It's absolutely great. Wow. So you didn't contact directly the Prime At Minister? First, no. You came from the yeah. from the back door. It started from his son, but after that, I was working with the uh, Prime Minister Chamber for the last year. Every time I needed help, when they could, they helped me. But it's very difficult in Israel. It's very difficult. If you know the politics in Israel, you would understand how much it's so hard to pass a law. And if someone is making a mista mistake, like the, the, we need to fix it, and it's. It takes so much time, you know, and animals are suffering. What, do you think it is also possible in other countries to, to make that approach uh, into the government or high levels? Of, we all of have rules? to try to do it. Yeah. We have to be in reality show. We have to be on the streets. We have to be in the government. We have to be all over in the media. This is how the world is going to change. We have to, you know, to... If the world will be 10% of vegans, it would just, you know, it's going to, it, the world will be heaven by itself. But we can't wait. We can't wait for any, for nobody. You know, when I was three months uh, vegan, I just made the big tattoo on my back, the, the sentence of uh, Albert Einstein, when he said the world will, will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but but by those who watch them without doing anything. And this is what I did when I was only three months vegan. And it was just like, um, you know, I have to tell you, when I'm with the animals in the farms, I don't need not the sentence and nobody else and not the text and not the messages and not nothing because I see them, I can feel them. And I'm the one who needs to turn my back and to walk away. And this is the hardest part to leave them there and you know that they are all going to suffer and the end is going to be the worst but we have to be very proud of what we are doing and not uh, you know a lot of people they all keep talking and talking and talking and i'm you know i'm uh, i meet with so many vegans in the world with the you know the leaders of the vegan community i hate to call it like this because um It's not like we all can be leaders and nobody should wait for nobody else. And, and I, I think that maybe the, the vegan community became a little bit spoiled, you understand? They all want to wait for something to happen. And when you are doing something, they just have to tell you how much you, you're wrong. So, you know, stop saying wrong thing about other vegans and just do by yourself whatever you believe in this is it but we, we have to be all places yeah. very very important and yeah. i have to tell you something in israel what happened is the vegan community just went with the uh, left parties all the time all the years and what it in is israel is not a left uh, voters They are right voters. So what we did, we just, you know, closed ourselves like this vegan community, very small community. Nobody could enter because you have to be a left uh, vote, uh, left wing. Um, yeah. yeah, you have to be feminist. You have to be. Wow, I, I can't be vegan. You understand? And what we try to say that you can be the first thing that you can be, you have to be is vegan. And now we'll do whatever you want. Please don't hurt. Please, Alec. But don't hurt animals. This is the first thing. After that, you can do whatever you want. You can help whatever, whoever you want. People, animals, it doesn't matter. But don't hurt. This is the first thing. And uh, 
And the, this main change that we came to the, the biggest party in Israel, it was the, cl the clever thing to do. Yeah, you, yeah. you can't boycott nobody. We don't have the privilege to boycott nobody. This is it. We need everybody to be a part of this. You know, uh, we have to, <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but we really, this is our future. We have no time, not for us and not for the animals. This yeah. is it. Yeah. What do you oppose those people who say, ah, you're now with Netanyahu and you're now right wing? And uh, because it's always difficult to say, ah, left wing, right wing, everybody has different opinions. And even if, especially in the Israeli very high conflict area, it's it's a very uh, yeah sensible sensible yeah. case. Uh, what do you oppose those people that you're now taking part of? I don't care. All I see is the good thing. This is what I'm saying about the privilege vegan community that we just have, I don't know how, um, because um, I say it all the time, when you talk about veganism with the left voters and the left parties, nobody would care. But now in this election in Israel, everyone was talking about the animals because how could Netanyahu take her to be his personal advisor? You, you, you know who I, who am I, okay? And uh, and Netanyahu, their family is is like I'm saying. This is what everybody wants to know in Israel. Everybody thinks they know what's going on inside their house. Inside there, you know, it's like. Uh, and when he started to talk about it, and the media was just you know getting it, and he was talking about it in his Likud TV, it's their own uh, television uh, media, and everybody was just. Oh my fucking God. And now they were talking about the animals. You are just like this and like that. And I didn't care because they were talking about animals all the time and in the media. And the left party just uh, brought another vegan uh, to their party. And you know, it was just like this. Inside of Israel, there was one party for the animals, just for the animals. The left wing party was with uh, the one who's uh, responsible to the Meatless Monday in Israel. She's vegan, she's a reporter, and I'm, of course, with the winners, with Netanyahu. <laughs> I hate to lose. I can't lose. <laughs> very good, very good. So everybody so, so, was talking yeah, about con it. Congratulations, actually. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, you want to say everybody's with the witness? I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> but everybody could choose. This is democracy. This is the election in Israel. You could choose Tal Gilboa with the Prime Minister uh, um, Benjamin Netanyahu. You could choose Mickey with Chosen uh, L'Israel, never mind. And you can choose Miflegit Tzedek Lakol. You could choose. Now you, can, you can't come with, uh, you know, this is democracy. This is Israel. Good. So what will be the next steps and when will it start that you're as a personal advisor? Now the Prime Minister, today they were all in the, uh, in our president in Israel. They started to say who is going to, of course it's going to be Netanyahu, to, you know, to arrange his uh, parliament. And uh, I think it's going to take something like a month after it's all going to, to end. And after that all, you know, is uh, personal advisors. There are not so many, we are, we are not so many. And after that, this is it. The work will start. And you know, I, we don't know what's going to happen, but I have so many plans. <laughs> I just want to start. And this is what I'm saying. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be very hard. And everything that this government is going to do, I'm going to be the blame. <laughs> you know, you're the, we vote for, uh, we didn't, but they vote a lot of, you know, a lot of people in Israel, they, they said, you help the prime minister to, to re-elect. And uh, I know that a lot of people vote for him because of me. But I said, I believe in me. I don't believe in her. I don't believe in them. I believe in me. And this is what I'm choosing. And uh, it's not going to be easy, but I just want to do it. And I don't care about people. You know, I'm here for five days. You, you have to see my uh, WhatsApp. They're opening a dairy farm next to my house. Then, okay, so what do you want me to do now to close all the dairy farms in Israel? I wish, but yeah. be logic. And I want to do good, and this is the main thing. And I don't care about people who are talking, because talks, there are so many could talk, but so many few that they are doing. But we are doing. <laughs>
Very good. So what uh, other projects uh, would you like to mention and where can the people contact you if they, if they want to actually? Today uh, we Or have our, you know, the, the, the biggest page in Israel about animal liberation. It's ours, Glass Walls. Uh, everybody can, you know, just message there because it's the, the only place that I could really uh, connect because I can't, uh, with my personal um, profile, it's very hard. Um, and I have to tell you, I don't, I, I know that the social media is very important, but it's, I just took a break for this last two uh, weeks. Uh, but yes, on my Instagram, but not on my profile Facebook. Uh, I can't reach all the messages over there, but Glass Walls, Total Liberation Israel, and my Instagram. Okay. There the people can learn more about you and... Yeah. and learn Very about good. us. We or, have or a you. movement in Israel yeah. and people has to know that they can't wait for nobody. And I'm saying it and I'm saying it to the people in Israel and all around the world. When I became vegan, every bridge that I saw, I can do it now also, but I can't uh, take a risk and it, it will be really... Uh, foolish for me but when i became vegan every bridge that i saw every restaurant everything was just you know that i could just do for the animals and i see now the vegans and you have to buy them uh, the sheet and you have to buy them the spray and you have to buy them the i don't know what's going on really and maybe it's our fault because when we had to do it by ourselves we were so motivated you understand and now we are a movement with money not that much money but we have money and we buy things to the activists and i think maybe we did a mistake really and this is what i was thinking this morning and now you're here but this is what i was thinking uh, this morning that maybe we did the mistake maybe we spoiled the activist you understand When I see Neil, it's like a big light for me because I say he's a new vegan, just a year and a half, and he's motivated and he's, he's just like when we, of course, we're motivated today, but our um, activism is just in, you know, other. And, uh, but there are so many things to do and just do it, just do it. And don't wait for nobody and don't be shy because shy people, they don't do history. This is it. It's not going to work and we have no time. Yeah, we have to make history to make the change on a global scale. Yeah. You know, it's like religious people when they say we, we want heaven, but what uh, the rabbis are telling them, you can't wait for this thing to happen. You have to bring it. You have to bring heaven. And it's exactly the same thing. We have to bring it. Just don't wait because the world is just an horrible place really we were you just you, you, you know this is heaven <laughs> but this is the only heaven yeah. you see what's going on here it's absolutely horrible yeah. thank you very much Tal Boa. it was such a pleasure to have you here thank you and yeah thank you for what you're doing thank yeah. you thank you very much and now you guys please write us down in the comments below what you think about going to the politics uh, with the vegan movement and Yeah, maybe you, one of you is the next one who is contacting uh, the high leaders of our country. And yeah, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Give us a like and a subscribe to the channel. And yeah, yeah. see you next week. Bye bye. bye. bye.